As researchers who live, play, and learn on Indigenous land, we acknowledge and respect the many nations on whose traditional territory we work and whose historical relationship with the land and sea continue to this day. Along the roughly 25,000 kilometer coastline of British Columbia, kelp forests are the dominant nearshore habitat. These floating forests are primarily formed by bull kelp and giant kelp, which provide shelter and food for a wide variety of commercially, recreationally, and culturally important species, such as herring, salmon, sea otters, and even the endangered northern abalone. Moreover, these kelps are important species to coastal First Nations because of their use in the cultural production of stories, foods, tools, and medicines. Changes in environmental conditions, such as warming oceans, increased acidification, and human impacts can damage the health and productivity of these important habitat-forming species. Due to the ecological, economic, and cultural significance of kelp forests, and the increasing threats from climate change they face, First Nations, academics, government, and coastal communities are prioritizing their monitoring and management. In the past, kelp forests have been studied on local scales by either aerial surveys at a singular time point or using boat-based methods for field data collection via snorkeling, scuba diving, and kayaking. These surveys provide important detailed information about the local status of kelp habitat, but are not able to cover large areas due to their intensive labor requirements and high costs. These local studies show highly variable patterns of change through time. For example, some studies show kelp forest increases where sea otters have been reintroduced. Some show decreases due to factors such as warm water anomalies or increased herbivory. And some focus on regions where kelp forests have remained relatively stable through time. But to date, no long-term large-scale studies exist for the BC coast. So to better understand the varying kelp dynamics across the BC coast, a long-term time series is needed. Satellite imagery provides the ability to monitor kelp forests over large areas through time. Advances in technology mean that satellites provide multiple images at high enough resolutions that we can now see and map kelp floating on the water's surface. This is a possibility because satellites measure the high signal of near-infrared light reflected from kelp's tissue structure floating on the water's surface, which contrasts with the low near-infrared signal from water. In this false color infrared satellite image shown on screen, you can see that kelp shows up as bright red, making it easily distinguishable from the dark water. Using this concept and through the advancement of imagery processing methods developed specifically for canopy kelp by past master's student Sarah Schroeder, the Spectral Remote Sensing Lab and collaborators are undertaking the task to map British Columbia's coastwide distribution of kelp forests through time. The goal is to determine the long-term distribution patterns of kelp forests and define areas of resilience in the context of climate change, which will then aid in local and regional management strategies in BC. The lab intends to do this by combining historic data with satellite imagery. The satellite imagery spans the past 20 years from high-resolution satellites like QuickBird, Worldview, Sentinel-2, and the Planet series, to approximately the last 50 years with medium-resolution satellites like Landsat and Spot. To get an even longer perspective of kelp forest change, this data will be compared to historic kelp distributions from aerial surveys undertaken by the province in the late 1900s, as well as kelp forest distributions from as early as the 1850s, which were recently reconstructed from British Admiralty charts by Dr. Maysira Costa. Currently, we have started by mapping changes seen in the Salish Sea, which is being led by Dr. Alejandra Marisoto, Dr. Gita Naranyan, and previous master's student Sarah Schroeder. Additionally, master's student Leanna Gendel is mapping the changes seen on the east coast of Haida Gwaii. And master's student Brian Timmer is conducting detailed analysis on how submersion by tides and currents influence the remote sensing of kelp forests. Brian uses hyperspectral data from an in-situ spectral radiometer, as well as multi-spectral drone sensors to measure light reflected from the kelp, similar to how satellites measure kelp reflectance.
After we understand how kelp forests are changing through time, we need to understand what is driving these changes and at what scale they're acting upon. We plan on disentangling the impacts of different environmental drivers, factors like sea surface temperature, salinity, nutrients, currents, wave exposure, and even broader climate anomalies. Additionally, we want to know how these environmental factors intersect with biological components of kelp ecosystems, like sea urchin and sea otter abundance, where available. This will allow us to understand how these factors interact across space and time, and enable us to highlight areas where kelp forests are resilient. Together with the valuable contribution from our collaborators and partners, we will put together a cohesive story about the past and present of kelp forests, and in doing so, hope to protect and restore this amazing ecosystem for future generations.